Kristen Tabor is the founder of Tabletop Media Group, a full-service media agency specializing in the food, beverage, agriculture, and lifestyle industries. She's a North Carolina native who graduated from NC State and worked at the North Carolina Department of Agriculture after she graduated. A new role leading the public relations and social campaigns for the now defunct Got to Be NC competition dining series spurred a career shift for her focus on media. In 2016, she launched Tabletop Media Group, a successful and growing company based in the Triangle area. Today, Kristen is focusing on tips and tricks for using Zoom and Google Meet, and we'd like to welcome her to our series. Thank you very much for being here today, Kristen. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm excited that we have so many awesome participants on board today. And please don't hesitate, like Colleen said, to pop into the chat and ask me questions throughout, I will be monitoring that. I have two screens up, so if you see me shifting my eyes that way, I'm looking at the presentation just as a heads up. So we'll go ahead and get started. We're gonna be talking about Zoom and Google Meet today. Those are two of many, many video platforms that are out there. I know Amazon has one. I mean, there's all sorts of different ones out there, but these are the two that we work with quite a bit. So it's really nice to meet all of you. I did wanna go ahead and pop up some of our contact information just in case you're interested in learning a little bit more about us or if you have further questions that you want to email me. My email is info at tabletopmediagroup.com. You can follow us on social media at tabletopmediagp for group and then contact us at tabletopmediagroup.com via our website. But this is our small but mighty team and we are growing, which is exciting. And it's just a pleasure to be here. So we'll go ahead and get started. So one kind of fun fact that I like to start off with is that Zoom has 300 million daily meeting participants. I think that is such a crazy number. Think of all the students that are using it, all the volunteer organizations, businesses, et cetera. And Zoom added 2.22 million monthly active users in 2020. And keep in mind, this is a stat from February 26th of 2020. They haven't updated this quite yet. But in uh, 2019 alone, it added 1.99 million. So you can see because of COVID and this interesting time where everybody is working virtually or meeting virtually, Zoom has really added um, a large number of folks. So what are we gonna actually talk about today? First of all, we're gonna talk about what is Zoom? the three main features of Zoom. How do you choose the right plan for your volunteer organization? How do you actually use Zoom? So scheduling a meeting, how to join a Zoom meeting, the fundamentals of Zoom, and how to use those breakout rooms, which is a really great feature that I love that Zoom has. Then we'll also have a little bit of fun. I'll show you how to use a virtual background, and then we'll collect info and see who attended via the Zoom platform. So first of all, what is Zoom? So we'll start with the basics. Zoom is a cloud-based tool that helps you meet with your team through web conferencing and collaboration. It's a video conferencing meeting that's hosted using that Zoom platform. So you will have to have an account and just go to zoom.com to set one up. And you can access Zoom a couple different ways. The first way is through your desktop application. So I've downloaded the Zoom application to my laptop and my desktop. That way I have it available here at my office. But then there's also a mobile app, which is really nice that you can download. And it's available for Android and um, iOS. And one thing that you can do is um, whenever you want to access Zoom, you can pull up that application or you can use your web browser. So if you've ever been sent a Zoom link, it usually automatically goes through your web browser. So I like to use Google Chrome. If I click on a Zoom meeting link that somebody has sent me, it will pop it open and um, into my web browser for me to join that way. So Zoom's core three features, we're gonna go over each one. The first one is that it allows you to host one-on-one -on -one meetings. So you can host unlimited one-on-one -on -one meetings with the free plan, which is huge. So that's pretty great, but say your volunteer organization wants to host a lot of participants. Maybe you're having like a board meeting or having all of your different volunteers join you on a Zoom call. I would definitely recommend doing the group video conference. So you can host up to 500 participants if you purchase a large meeting add-on. So that's something good to know. 
And then the free plan, however, does allow you to host video conferences, but the limit is you only have 40 minutes and you can only have up to 100 participants. And we'll go over some of the pricing, I believe, on the next slide. Then the third core feature of Zoom is that there's screen sharing, which is what I'm doing right now on a different platform, but this is pretty standard across the board for most video platforms. You'll be able to meet one-on-one -on -one with a large group and share your screen which is what I'm doing right now. So y'all can see my presentation. So this is really helpful uh, when you want to, you know, give a presentation or maybe share some of your volunteer organization numbers or budget, what have you. So here's a little bit of information about Zoom's plans and pricing structure. So the first one is free. As I mentioned earlier, you can host up to 100 participants. You can have unlimited one-on-one -on -one meetings. There's that 40 minute time limit for your meetings. And then they do also offer support. If you go to the pro account, which is what I have, it's $14.99 a month, so pretty affordable. It includes all the basic features that the free account has, but you can have a 24 hour meeting duration. Hopefully none of us would need that, but still a cool feature. It also gives you reporting, admin feature controls, and so on. You also have um, what's kind of cool too, is one gigabyte of Zoom cloud space. So if you want to record a meeting, for instance, maybe you're giving a big annual uh, meeting type of presentation, but you wanna record it for people who need to attend that later, it will allow you to store it on Zoom's cloud space. So that way you don't have to take up any of your personal cloud space or hard drive space on your computer. And then you can access those recordings later. Then if you want to do the business plan, it's $19.99 a month. It has all pro features, but now it's up to the amount of participants. So you can have 300 participants. You also have dedicated phone support. So if something is going wrong or you need some assistance, you can call Zoom and they'll offer you some, uh, some support. You also can do company branding, have a vanity URL, and there's a bunch of other great features that you can access through an admin dashboard. So those are the three different plans. Hopefully kind of gauge what you think might be best for your organization. So I'm going to show you guys how to use Zoom by scheduling a meeting. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to play these videos that I have in here, but they will be sent to you later. So if you're like, oh, I can't remember, you know, what she exactly did to get to schedule a meeting, you can refer to these videos later. So this video is one that I actually pre-recorded, but I'll walk you through all those steps right now about how to schedule a meeting. So for those of you who have never used Zoom, there are a lot of great features on the back end. So we're gonna pop into here real quick. So I am in my Zoom account. And now what I wanna do is go to my account and I'm already signed in. Usually, of course, it'll ask you for your username and password. It'll let you know that um, you have an admin dashboard and then a personal dashboard. I go to that personal dashboard to schedule a meeting. So I'll click on my meetings and we'll give it just a second. It's running a little bit slow right now. And then if I want to schedule a meeting, you'll see that I have two other meetings coming up, which is great. If I toggle it over to the previous tab, you can see what previous meetings I had, and then you can even schedule different meeting templates. So maybe you have like a recurring meeting that happens quite often. You could go in there and have a meeting template on the Zoom backend, but we're, we're just wanting to schedule a meeting. So I'll go ahead and pop in here to schedule a meeting. And we're actually gonna have one of my team members join us on a Zoom call. That way you all can see what Zoom looks like on the backend too. So we'll give it, We'll do test one, two, three. And I'm going to set this meeting for 12.15, or we'll do 12 o'clock today. Um, it only lets you do it in 30 minute increments, just as a heads up. And then you can choose your duration. So since I have the plan where we can have more than 40 minutes, it'll let me to go up to 24 hours if I wanted to, but I'll just you know select that we only want it for 30 minutes for this one. And then if I wanna set it as a recurring meeting, I can do that, I can change my time zone. And then this is the really important part that some people get a little bit tripped up on. So I wanted to let you know 
that you can include a registration link, which is something fantastic, especially if you're keeping tabs on how many people are signed up to attend, let's say like, like a, a speaking engagement like we're doing right now. So you could click this required button and folks would have to register. So it'll make them put in their first, their last name, and also their email address in order to register for this session. So I'm gonna uncheck that box since I don't need that. And then a meeting ID, I usually just have it generate automatically. You could use your personal meeting ID if you want. And then security, a lot of times uh, people, you know, or Zoom has gotten a little bit of a bad reputation lately because there were people that were like Zoom bombing. And so people would pop onto a Zoom and say some vulgar things or show their screen or something like that. And it was not great for schools. I don't know if you remember hearing all about that in the news, but that's why it's so important to put a passcode on your Zoom meeting. So I always do a passcode. And then I typically uh, will select that waiting room function. So the host, which would be me in this case, you would actually have to admit each person individually or all at once that are hanging out in the waiting room. So just think of it like a doctor's office. So you might have some people just waiting, but then you'll click on their name and they'll pop right in uh, to your office or to that presentation. And then um, down here is the video settings. So I typically always join with my video on, but if you wanted to just join with it off and then set your video on afterwards, you can do that. And then participant, I usually leave off unless we do want to see everybody's video. So for this case, I'll just leave them both off uh, for our test Zoom. And then audio, I always select both because Zoom does allow you to join over the telephone if you want as well. So say one of your volunteers from your organization doesn't have a clue how to use Zoom, they have no interest in downloading it, they just want to call in via their phone, it will give them the option to do that. And then there's some other meeting options, like you can mute participants upon entry. That's one of my favorite ones I like to do, especially if there's a lot of people because you don't want a lot of crazy feedback going on. And then you can automatically record a meeting. So remember how we were talking about the Zoom cloud storage and how Zoom, if you have that uh, business plan or the pro plan, will allow you to store some of those audio recordings onto their cloud system. Go ahead and select that because now what it'll do Zoom will automatically start recording that and it will automatically save it to your cloud system at the end of the presentation. So now what we're going to do is hit save. And then you'll notice that I have the option to add this to my Google Calendar, my Outlook, my Yahoo, and then it also has the invitation link. So this is that link that people would click on in their web browser to access this particular Zoom meeting. And it will also list all the different video, audio, and meeting options that I've selected. So I can review that. If I wanted to edit it, I can just simply go down here and edit. Say I want to delete this, I can hit delete. One important thing to make note of is where this invite link is right here. It only has just the link. It doesn't have all of the other information that people will need in order to access this Zoom meeting. So what you'll want to do is click over here on copy invitation. So if you pop open here, there'll be a giant uh, bit of text for you that you can hit copy meeting invitation and it will copy it to your clipboard. And this is what you'll see a lot of people email out or add to a calendar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, send this over to one of the ladies on my team real quick. So let me pop open into my Google chat, which we will also talk about. Um, but she's going to hop on to our Zoom meeting here in just a second. And I'll go ahead and we're going to start this meeting so we can get it loaded. And give me just a second while um, everything is loading. And if you have any questions, feel free to pop that in um, while everything is popping up. It's taking a little bit today. All right. Kristen, we had a, a comment that um, techsoup.org has um, discounted rates for Zoom for nonprofits. Um, so you might want to check them out. I'm on there right now, and there are other, other um, software options as well besides Zoom. That is great. Can you pop that into the chat as well? I would Absolutely. love to check that out too. Great. 
Okay, so let me, um, I'm still gonna try to send this to Quinn real quick on my team. Don't mind my crazy email inbox. <laughs> All right. Okay, so techsoup.org, that's good to know. All right, it has taken a, a little while to load, but we'll go ahead and open up the Zoom meeting real quick. So what you're seeing right now is the Zoom meeting. And since we don't have anybody in here right now, it's just me. So if I wanted to share it with somebody, I could also copy the link right here. I can invite people straight from my um, Zoom account if I wanted. And if when you click on that button, it will pop up in another screen and you can send them an email from your default email service, Gmail or Yahoo, which is also pretty neat. If I wanted to share my screen, I can use this button or also this bottom Zoom toolbar down here. So let's see if this has loaded real quick. I just want y'all to be able to see uh, what it looks like when. Uh, oh man. Okay. Sorry, it's it's taken a little bit to load on my end, but it's fine. Um, so we'll just go through some of the different features on Zoom real quick. So whenever you click participants, this will pop open and you'll see all the different participants that are available in your Zoom meeting. So right now you only see that one participant. And if I did want to invite somebody else, I could certainly do that. And you'll see them all over there. And you can also click invite over here as well. If I wanted to take a look at the chat function, similar to what we're doing right now on this platform, I would just click on the chat box and it will open it out to a little pop-up and I can type in here, similar to what you guys are already familiar with. And I have different settings. So if there were other people in this meeting, I'd be able to hit just one-on-one -on -one conversation. So let's just say I wanted to only talk to Colleen. I could click her name and then I could only talk to her. But if I wanted to talk to everybody, I'll need to make sure that that's set. You can also just talk amongst panelists or host, um, host to panelist. So that's a really great feature. And you can um, save the chat at the very end, which is a really great feature too. If I wanted to record, I would simply just hit this record feature and it will automatically start recording my meeting. And then if I want to share the screen, I simply click share screen and it will give me the options to share if I want to share screen one, screen two, there's also a really cool feature called whiteboard, which I want to show you guys. So we'll go ahead and share the whiteboard feature. So whiteboard is this awesome feature that Zoom created, and you can use this whiteboard collaboratively if you would like. So one thing that um, I like to do is let's say um, you're doing some type of budget exercise and you want to write numbers, you want to write text on the whiteboard. So there's all these really awesome features. You can change your colors, but let's say I want to write the number 30. I could write this on the whiteboard. I could um, get other people to start drawing with me. I could add text in here. So get creative. I mean, there's a lot of creative ways that I've seen this tool being used, but that is under the screen share function on Zoom. If you want to clear out everything, you simply just hit clear all drawings or you can clear just your own drawings. And then you can also save this whiteboard feature at the very end if you want, and you, you can uh, save it as a PNG in whatever folder on your computer. So it's a pretty fun uh, function. I really like to use it. All right. And I'm going to also go over breakout rooms real quick. So breakout rooms is a feature that you will have to make sure in your settings on the back end of Zoom that it's turned on. But let's say, just as an example, one of your organizations is just brainstorming goals for 2021 and you have different committees. So maybe you had your big brainstorm 2021 meeting and you want to break out into the different committees. So what you can do is break out into however many rooms that you would like. So let's say we have an arts committee, um, a volunteer committee, and then an events committee, just throwing out some examples. So I would wanna break my session into three breakout rooms. 
And right now, obviously it says I have zero participants, which is sad, but if I did have participants, it would tell me how many participants total I have. So it can automatically put everybody into a breakout room or you can manually select who you want in that breakout room. So this would be a good exercise if you wanted to hit manually and create rooms, then it will let you actually select what participants go in what room. So I've seen this used a lot of different ways and um, I highly recommend this tool. It's really fun to use. And you can also, when you're in the breakout room, you can also get warnings. Like you have one more minute left in your breakout room if you want to assign breakout rooms to only be 10 minutes each. And you can also, as the host, go back and forth throughout the different breakout rooms, which is pretty neat. So that's a great feature. And in the presentation on Google, um, and Zoom that we'll be sending to you at the end. There's a really fantastic video that Zoom has created, and you can take a look at that and watch how they set up that breakout room. And they have about like 10 different participants on the Zoom call. So it's really helpful to see how that works. So those are the fundamentals of Zoom. I did see that we had a question pop in from Audrey. What's the most efficient way to invite participants, email or text? So it kind of depends on your organization, but I typically just email out that Zoom link. So if you remember when I um, was telling you guys about copy link on the back end of Zoom, when we're setting up the meeting, just copy that link and then paste that into an email. And then I would write in all the different email addresses that I want that meeting to be sent to. I think another efficient way that I like to do is to add all that information into a calendar request and just add people to my calendar request. So those are uh, good ideas. And then we have another question that says, can I purchase month to month or a quarterly subscription for larger Zoom meetings? So I know that um, what I've done, Marge, in the past is I had to host a pretty large Zoom meeting and you can buy like a one-time large Zoom meeting um, pass, I guess you could say. So let's just say you only wanted to host one large meeting every now and then. I would just stick to the free account and then subscribe to that just one time type of Zoom event. I'm not sure if they have um, quarterly subscriptions for larger Zoom meetings. I'll have to take a look at that and get back to you. But I do know that you can drop your Zoom plan at any time. So let's say, Marge, you knew that you're going to be having a lot of like really heavy um, meetings in February and March, then I would recommend that you sign up for that pro or business plan, and then you can drop it back down to that free plan if you want. Um, I know for our Zoom account, I get billed just month to month with that. So really great question. So we're going to hop off this Zoom meeting, and then let me see if I can get back to our presentation real quick. Okay, here we go. And as I mentioned, there will be the opportunity for you to watch this video that's on the screen right now about breakout rooms. So feel free to reference that um, after the presentation. And this, um, I don't think we're gonna have enough time for it because I really wanna cover Google Meet, but I always love to say, make sure that you play around with the virtual backgrounds on Zoom. So Zoom allows you to create these fantastic custom backgrounds. We work with the Sweet Potato Commission and one of the ladies um, that's the director, her background on Zoom is a field of sweet potatoes that are being dug. So that's kind of fun. I've also seen the Duke, the, not Duke, the Duke Lemur Center has put together these really fun lemur um, photos for your background, which is kind of cool too. So there's a lot of really great uh, stuff out there. All right. So um, I, I like to share this just as a little bit of uh, fun throughout the presentation, but I thought this was absolutely hilarious. This was early on in March, like right when the pandemic was hitting and this uh, lady tweets, my boss turned herself into a potato on our Microsoft Teams meeting and can't figure out how to turn the setting off. So she was just stuck like this the entire meeting. So be sure to make sure that your virtual background is off if you're in a professional setting, but you can, if you want to have some fun, turn yourself into crazy things or add a fun virtual background. So this is just one example from Microsoft Teams, which is another type of platform that you could use. 
And then I'll let you guys watch this video on your own time about using Zoom virtual backgrounds um, so you can get that set up and have a little bit of fun. And then lastly, I wanted to let you know about the registration section. So as I mentioned earlier, when we were setting up our meeting, I checked the box that I did want to require registration. So requiring registration is found in that My Meetings tab of the Zoom web app. So make sure that you're going to set it up, check that box, and you can require registration. So this is just an example of what the meeting registration looks like. So it will require them to have their first, last name, email, and confirm their email address. And it will tell them what the topic is and the description, what time, and the date, and um, obviously the time zone as well, which is nice. So this is what that link will look like. And you can send out um, the meeting registration link to folks and they can sign up. And then on your back end, you'll get to um, see who all is signing up, what their names are and their emails. And that's great information for you to have later. So Zoom already um, has those standard fields loaded in there. And if you wanted to add new questions or fields, just jump over to the tab on Zoom that's called custom questions. And you can add that all in there. So that's a really great feature that they have. And at the very end of your meeting, I will leave this for you guys to take a look at. I've listed out instructions just step by step on how you can get attendee information from a report once your meeting is finished. So let's say we were all on a Zoom call right now. Once I end that meeting, I can go into my Zoom account management and click on the report section. And I can look at usage reports and click on the meeting to find what meeting I want. So I would click on the volunteer presentation meeting and I can generate a report. And so this report is fantastic. It will let you know how long people were on the Zoom. So let's say Colleen is on there for an hour and a half and Kristen's on there for an hour and 45 minutes. And maybe Lisa is only on there for 10 minutes or Marge only hopped on there for five seconds. So it will let you know who's staying the longest, which is something great if you need to monitor time or whatnot. And then it will also um, let you even download their, um, their information from that registration link. So their first, last name and email address. And then if you added other fields, it will automatically download in there too. So it's a really fun feature and that is available with the pro and the business account. Um, so you wanna make sure that you, you have those accounts in order to access this. So next up, I wanna make sure we have enough time to go over Google Meet. So what exactly is Google Meet? What does the interface look like? And how do you use Google Meet? And we'll go over how to schedule a meeting, the fundamentals, sharing your screen, and the chat function. Kristen, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt. You have a couple of questions here. Can you do backgrounds oh, yeah. on the free Zoom? So yes, you can do, do backgrounds on the free Zoom. Okay, and the second question is, I've had difficulties getting a virtual background loaded onto my MacBook Air. Have you encountered this problem before? Hmm, I do not have a MacBook Air, so I'm not entirely sure. I know that Zoom automatically has virtual backgrounds that are loaded in um, to the platform itself. So if you go into Zoom and just click on your settings and virtual background, you should just be able to upload them like you would like an image that you're uploading somewhere. So test it out and also watch that video, Lisa, that's in this presentation later on, and it will walk you step by step how to do that. And hopefully that'll help. But I'm not sure, maybe it's, it's some kind of strange setting that you might have turned on, on on the Zoom account. But good questions. Any other ones, Colleen? Okay, I think. That's all I see good. for now, thank you. Okay, no problem. All right, so what is Google Meet? So Google Meet is Google's enterprise video conferencing software. And it's something that I use almost every day with my team because we are part of the G Suite um, members. So G Suite is essentially the fancy term for all the different features that Google has. So Gmail, Google Calendar, et cetera, et cetera, Google Docs, Google Sheets. So if you have an email address um, that has been set up using G Suite, you will automatically have that Google Meet functionality. So if you're a Google user, you pretty much are guaranteed to have that built in because it is a free service. Meet offers features like real-time captions, which is a really cool feature that I'll show you, 
and it will allow you to support up to 250 participants and 100,000 live stream viewers. So that's something that I think sets it apart a little bit more. If you wanted to live stream something, you could invite a lot of people to watch that. And then Google users can head to meet.google.com to start a meeting or meetings can be booked ahead of time by simply just using the Google chat uh, function or Google calendar. So I'll say I use the Google calendar function a lot to schedule out meetings. And you can also do it just straight from your phone, which is pretty cool. So the interface of Google Meet, I included a little screenshot of um, somebody that I found on the web. This is what it looks like. So you'll see the participants um, on the far right hand side and then whoever's speaking, you'll see them big in, um, in that, that front, um, front and center kind of focus right there. But if you did want to swap that around, you could, you can have it where all of the participants are together and you can see them each as the same size squares if you want. So it's just kind of a personal preference. And then Google Meet also allows you to do the following. You can turn on and off your camera, you can mute your mic, you can share your screen. And then, um, as I mentioned, you can see all the different participants on the right side of your screen, or you can adjust that to that grid view if you wanted to. So that's what that interface looks like. And how do you actually use Google Meet? So I'll demonstrate how to schedule and start a meeting directly in your calendar and by visiting meet.google.com. So let me pop into here real quick. So we're gonna go to meet.google.com. So I've typed that into my web browser and I'm signed into my G Suite account. So if I wanted to join or start a meeting, I simply just click this button and I can write a meeting code or nickname if I wanted to. So maybe I'll write this as test one, two, three, and I would continue. And this is starting it in real time. So I'm automatically starting this meeting and it's just gonna take a couple seconds to load, but it will go ahead and pop open my meeting. So it does give me some options where I can go ahead and join this meeting now. And I can also present my screen if I wanted. And then I can join and use phone for audio if I want it as well. So Google will allow you to use your phone and also your computer if you would like. So we're gonna go ahead and hit join now. And so this is what that Google Meet interface will look. And if I wanted to invite people directly to join this meeting, I can simply click add people or copy that joining info. So it's very similar to Zoom. If I wanted to copy the URL, and um, the dial-in number and the pin, I could do that. So I'm gonna actually hit add people and we'll see if Quinn's available for my team to pop in there real quick. So I start typing in her name, it automatically pops open for me and I'm gonna have her send an email and it's going to send her an email that says, Kristen is in a Google meet right now, would you like to join? So we'll give her just a few seconds to pop in there. And I'm gonna send her a chat as well. Um, and that way we can play around on here. If I wanted to go ahead and present my screen, down in the uh, lower right-hand corner, there's this present now button. And if I click on this, it'll give me the option to share my entire screen. If I just wanted to share a window, I could, or just a tab. And then um, over here, there are some more options. So going back to virtual backgrounds, if you wanted to change the background of, of your, um, your Google Meet, you could just click on this button and it will give you the opportunity to select a lot of really fun um, backgrounds. So right now somebody is hopping onto our Google Meet. So this is Quinn from our team. So we'll go ahead and hit admit. And I am currently changing that virtual background and I can go in and I can look at what all um, is available on here. It's not working right now because my camera is being used by another platform. So we'll go ahead and click that off. But if I wanted to see some other settings, I can use my phone for audio. I can also turn on captions if I wanted to. So this is where I was talking about how you can use closed captions. So if you have people that um, have any type of disabilities, this is a great option for them, or maybe their microphone and, um, and their headphones aren't working, you could also turn on captions and it will pick up what you're saying in real time and use um, this feature. So I'll go ahead and turn this on and um, I'm talking. So now hopefully it will start loading it for us. 
but it should pop it right up at the very bottom um, when you're speaking. It might be a little bit slow right now. Oh, there it is. So it's a pretty cool feature that Google has, and I really like to use it um, on Google Meet as well. So we're gonna turn off captions, and then I'll also show you how you can open up a whiteboard on Google Meet, similar to, um, to Zoom. You can use this feature, and they call it a jam, so you can open up a whiteboard. So we'll click on this. I can start a new whiteboard. And it'll take just a second, hopefully. There we go. Okay. So it's just um, having me share a link to this whiteboard with Quinn for my team. But if I wanted to open this and start um, adding fun text, or if I even wanted to upload, let's say an image, to this whiteboard and draw on it, I could do that. So this is pretty neat. You can set a background, you can add in images, you can write on it and pin. Um, so there's all sorts of neat functions there. I will say I'm a big fan of the Google Meet Jamboard more so than the Zoom um, whiteboard because Jamboard, you can upload your own photos if you wanted. You can also um, just, um, share this later on too, which is pretty great. So we'll save it like as a Google Doc type of uh, format. So we'll hit close on this one. And then you can also change the layout. So as I mentioned, you can change it right now. We're in the grid view where we're side by side. But if I wanted to change the layout, I could have it be um, on the side. So now you'll see I'm just up in the corner and Quinn who's talking is in the uh, very front and center. And I think that's pretty much it for Google Meet. It's a fantastic function. If you do wanna chat with people, you would just have to click on this little function right up here, chat with everyone, and it will pop open a chat ability. So I can say, hey, Quinn, and then it would give her the opportunity to write back to me if she would like. And then I can also look, yep, she just said hi. And then I can also look at the people right in here and I can see who are the participants that are on the call. If I wanna add more people, I could click that right there. So I'm gonna let Quinn know that um, we're gonna be hopping off and we'll end this um, test Google Meet. So we'll go ahead and click leave the call in order to end it. And then we'll pop back over to our presentation. Well, actually, you know what? I want to show you guys how to schedule a Google Meet call. I know we went over how to just start it, you know, right away. Like, let's just say somebody wants to meet with you right away. You can hop over to that meet.google.com to schedule it. But if you, or to, to start it, but if you want to schedule it, I go into my calendar function. And then I can set whatever date and time I want somebody to meet with me. So let's just say I want to go to February 3rd to schedule my Google Meet. So I'd pop over here and then I would add it to whatever time I am scheduling that meeting for. So we'll say 1 p.m. And then it'll pop open all of my calendar functions. So we'll give it a second, it's being super slow. I have a lot of stuff open today. So we'll type test one, two, three, and then I can add in all the different guests. So I would add in all the different volunteer or um, volunteers or organizers from my group. And then I would click this button, add Google Meet video conferencing. So as soon as I add that, it will automatically create a link for me and it will create all the different conference details. So if I just click this little arrow button, it will drop down and it'll let me know what the phone number is and the PIN number and my meeting ID. So if somebody wanted to join from the computer, they would simply click that URL. And then if they wanted to join just by calling in over the phone, they would call that number and use that PIN number. So that's how you would go ahead and schedule it. You'd add in all your guests and then you just simply hit save. So it's a very easy process. It doesn't have as many bells and whistles as Zoom on the back end, like creating a registration link or all of that. So that is one of the kind of downfalls to it. I think Google probably will work on making it slightly more sophisticated. All right.
Now pricing, I did want to chat about this. So pricing for Google Meet, anyone with a Google account can create a video meeting. So as I said, it's totally free if you want to meet with somebody on Google Meet. But there are some limitations for the free version. You can only meet for up to 60 minutes per meeting. So there is this link right here that I'll click on that breaks down all the different pricing for Google Meet. And I think it's something that um, definitely worth diving into if you want. So for the free account, you can have up to 100 participants for your maximum. You can have unlimited number of meetings, but it is only one hour that's for free. And then there's a lot of other tools that it has. If you sign up for the Google Workspace Essentials account, it's $8 a month and you have a max length of 300 hours. Um, and then you have 150 participants, unlimited meetings. Then you have the enterprise level, similar, except for you can have 250 participants. So there are a couple of limitations. The live stream is something that's kind of neat that we mentioned. So you can have um, 100,000 viewers if you want. And you do get online support for the top accounts. And then there's just self-help online tools that you can read that are community forums for the free account. So those are the different pricing structures for Google Meet. So I wanted to open it up. I know we're right at our time. I wanted to open it up to see if you guys had any, any questions about Google Meet or Zoom that we didn't cover. So feel free to pop those in or uh, Colleen, if you have any questions that have popped in, feel free to read those off. Kristen, we had one question that came in. Um, can you explain the polling feature in Zoom? So there is a polling feature in Zoom and I can for sure send some videos. I wish that the computer was going a little bit faster. We could have a lot of people on Zoom so we could test it out together. But there's a great video tutorial that Zoom's put together about how to use the polling feature. But just to explain it a little bit, this is something really great. I've, I've done it before for presentations. So what I could have done for today, if you're using Zoom, as I could say, how many of you have ever used Zoom? And it'll give all the participants a little pop-up and it will give me different answers. So I can say, no, never use Zoom. Maybe, I think I did, I can't really remember. Or yes, I use it all the time or whatever. Um, and then it would allow me as the participant to select my answer. And then once the host sees that most of the participants have used that feature or they give them a minute, they can close the poll and then you'll have all the results pop up on the screen, which is really cool. So it's a great feature, especially you know, if you wanna ask questions to the audience and poll them. Um, but yeah, that's a really good question. That's an awesome feature that Zoom has as well. And I saw one that popped in, I may have missed it, but can you share your screen with Google Meet? You definitely can. So that was that feature in the bottom right, I believe, yeah, bottom right and it says share your screen. And so you can click on that and it will open up what windows you wanna share. So it'll say, do you wanna share your entire screen, just a window, just a little tab on your um, Google Chrome or whatever web browser you have? Good question, Paula. Kristen, do you have any other practical advice as far as screen sharing? Um, I noticed at one point um, we saw your desktop. So about like maybe security of your computer or anything like that when you're when you're hosting. Yeah. So I know you guys saw my my wedding photo, but so for me, I'm sharing my entire screen. So that's something to keep in mind. So if I'm just going to show you guys, if I were to close out of this right now, you would see my wedding photo because I'm sharing my entire screen. But let's just say I wanted to only share a tab, I could do that. So if I only wanted to share this tab, for instance, I could set on Zoom, share a tab. And then that way, when you're closing out of that tab, let's say you toggle over to this tab, it won't show it. So that's a great question about privacy and security and all of that. So just make sure whatever share settings you have on there, um, that you select only a tab if you don't want people to see your computer screen. I just did the whole screen for today because we're working with a lot of different tabs and a lot of different programs. So for me, you know, it's fine. But if you don't want to be showcasing all your private information out there, definitely make sure you select which um, entire screen, tab, or just a window that you want to share.
Okay, you also have the question, how can you use PowerPoint presentations in Zoom? Yes, good question. So that's pretty much what I'm using. I'm using Google Slides right now. So all you would have to do is share your particular PowerPoint window or your entire screen. So you would just open up PowerPoint, select your presentation, and then click Share Screen and select that PowerPoint to share. So right now I just selected my slides from Google presentation to share. And so you can see them, I'm flipping back and forth between them all. So it would look exactly the same, but great question. You can pretty much share anything. Um, one thing that we did discover is, I know on Zoom, if you're sharing video, for instance, like say you wanted to play a YouTube video, you would have to make sure on your Zoom backend that your settings are turned on where the audience can hear your computer sound. So I know on the platform that we're using right now, it doesn't necessarily have that function, uh, but that is something cool that Zoom does have if you ever need to showcase a video. How do you choose which platform to use with so many options? Oh man, that's a hard one. I think it just depends on what I'm presenting, but I'm a big fan of Zoom. I, I really like Zoom for larger scale type of like virtual events that we're hosting. So I've used Zoom primarily for a lot of like public speaking gigs that I've done, especially great to pull people. And I, I just think it has a lot of great bells and whistles. Google Meet for me is my more like day to day. It's really fast because I am a Google user. So I can easily like schedule um, things with my team or I can like just start a chat automatically and invite them if I need to hop on and do a video call with them really quick. So it's been great. Um, to work virtually with that. So I think it just depends. Like if you're a big Google user, try Google Meet out and see how you like it. But if I'm gonna be hosting like hundreds of people on an event, I personally would use Zoom. And just as a heads up, I also included all the contact information at the very end of this presentation, and I'll be sending it out to you guys. That way you have access to it. You can watch any of those videos, and I'll be sure to include a video for polling in the uh, presentation too. That way you have that. Is there an advantage to using the app or the browser for these platforms? So really, um, whatever you would like. I. I generally use the website browser just because when I click on to start it, it just automatically pulls it up on my website browser. But I do love the Zoom app for your phone, like if you're on the go. So I've had a couple of meetings where I've had to, you know, take them out of coffee shop or whatnot. So I'll go ahead and download that on my phone. And there is a big advantage if you're using a mobile device, a mobile device to have that app downloaded on that like tablet or phone because it doesn't work um, unless you have it, I believe, um, on a mobile device. But it will give you like alerts on your desktop, you know, if you have any kind of notifications turned on that you have a Zoom meeting coming up or whatnot. So it's pretty cool. Um, I can show you what, let's see. So this is, um, you can probably see it now, what the, the um, application looks like, like as soon as I pop it, open. So let me see if I can remember my password. That's always the hard part. It's usually just saved automatically. Um, so you'll have to log in. Oh, nope. There we go. So now I'll drag this back over. So this is what my Zoom um, desktop app looks like. So you can open that up and it'll show you that I have some upcoming meetings right in here. I can also chat on here with people. So, I mean, it has a couple of little things in here. If I wanted to go ahead and share my screen, I could do that. Schedule a new meeting, I can do that directly from the app too. So it just depends on if you're more like a web browser user, just use it there. I tend to like the website browser features a little bit better than this um, particular interface. Just my personal preference though. Okay, I don't see any more questions on here. Oh, yes, wait. Do you encounter issues with online etiquette? <laughs> Good question. I have not really encountered anything too crazy. The only thing that I have encountered is when 
I've been a participant of a Zoom meeting and the host did not mute everybody. And so you'll hear a lot of feedback and it's like, oh my gosh, come on. And so I would just say like good host etiquette is to always mute everybody when they're first jumping into your Zoom meeting. And um, another thing too, you can have like very high level settings on Zoom. So make sure you dive in there, but you can you know, have the option for people to unmute themselves if they want. And so every now and then I've been on a presentation where somebody might unmute themselves and start talking kind of over the presenter or over the host. And so that's not really great etiquette, but you can on the back end of Zoom say that if somebody wants to be unmuted, so let's say Colleen wants to be unmuted, she would hit unmute, but it would send me, the host, a notification that she wants to be unmuted. And so then I would just hit OK and it would allow her to start talking. So just a couple of things I've encountered, but really good question. I've heard some horror stories though. <laughs> so just make sure you have all your settings uh, squared away. Another question, do you always let participants know you are recording? I just rule of thumb do. They will see it in the bottom of their Zoom presentation that the meeting is being recorded. So that is something just to know. I just usually in the very beginning say this meeting is being recorded for later use and just leave it at, at as that. And we have a comment from Kim. Also remember to check the waiting room to automatically to allow folks in. So I usually let invitees enter automatically. Yeah, so that waiting room feature is great. So that was something that we talked about when you're uh, setting up the meeting to enable the waiting room. And so you can take a look and let's just say you have like maybe 10 people that are supposed to be on this Zoom meeting, but now you magically have like 15. So you can look at all of the people that have registered and you're like, huh, I don't know who these random five people are. So you can leave them hanging out in the waiting room and they'll never be admitted into your presentation. That's a really good point. So if that can help you um, eliminate some strange things happening <laughs> potentially on a Zoom call. I don't really see a lot of just extra guests hanging out in the waiting room that aren't supposed to be on there though. Okay, thank you very much, Kristen. Thank you to all of our attendees. Um, the recording will be sent out later this week along with the other materials that Kristen has agreed to provide. Um, we hope that you can join us for our next program in the Lunch and Learn series, which will be January the 12th at noon. And we'll be Helpful Strategies for Disaster and Crisis Preparedness presented by Audrey Hart, who is an Emergency Management Specialist for New Hanover County. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you so much, Kristen, for being with us today. Thank you all. It was great to chat with you and let me know if you have any other questions that pop up. You can shoot, shoot me over any email if you need. All right. Have a wonderful afternoon.